Hi, welcome to our 13th of June update. This is uh, TNT checking all the main stories around Thailand. Please subscribe to the channel and uh, off we go. And thepatianews.com done a great uh, quick review of some of the, uh, the milestone stories from yesterday. The Thai Constitutional Court reviews move forward party dissolution and Prime Minister's appointment controversy. And the Thai Constitutional Court got yesterday with their weekly meeting addressing cases regarding the alleged subversion of the government by the Move Forward Party and a petition by 40 senators questioning the qualifications of the Thai PM. And the Constitutional Court reviewed a petition from the Election Commission submitted by the, uh, the political party registrar uh, seeking the dissolution of the Move Forward Party. And the courts ordered the Election Commission to submit a list of witnesses and evidence by June the 17th. What's well, next Monday? Uh, to aid its consideration, the Constitutional Court will conduct further research and present its findings at the next hearing uh, the next day, which would be next Tuesday, June the 18th. Now we're going to the Thai PBS version of the same story. Charter Court to commence hearings on move forward dissolution case next Monday. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, different stories, different days, but uh, it's all going to be happening next Monday or Tuesday. Uh, but one interesting comment in this story that I thought was worthwhile the court, meanwhile, did not respond to the Move Forward Party's submission of additional evidence. And this is being interpreted as meaning that the, uh, the court has rejected the party's additional evidence in its defence of the Election Commission's demand for the party to be dissolved and all its executive committee members to be banished from politics for 10 years. So the, uh, the Thai PBS story telescoping its belief that uh, things are not looking good for the Move Forward Party. But we'll move on to the wash up of that fire at the Chattachak Market, which killed, well, apparently thousands of animals. BangkokPost.com reports Chattachak Fire Sparks calls to protect animals. And animal protection activists are calling for changes to laws governing sales of pets and exotic animals following the deadly fire at Chattachak on Tuesday. Sorry, it was Tuesday. And down the bottom there, thousands of animals living in 118 pet shops in an area covering 1,400 square metres were believed to have been killed. And yesterday, 10 groups issued a joint statement calling for measures to ensure such a tragedy doesn't occur again. And that was from the Society for the Promotion of Animal Welfare under Royal Patronage, the Thai Animal Guardians Association, the Thai Society for the Prevention of Cruelty Animals and the Save Elephant Foundation. And they expressed concern that the incident had put Thailand under a harsh global spotlight and lamented the suffering the animals experienced. Uh, they demanded standardised measures for buildings in which pets are sold, um, including measures on fire protection and other safety aspects. Uh, they also called for enforcement of related laws. I mean, they do exist. Meanwhile, the Chattachak District Office has fenced off the fire zone for 90 days so the investigation can continue unhindered. But this story from Thai PBS World took it a bit further. Animal lovers demand permanent closure of Chattachak Pet Market, and this does read a bit like an editorial. The blaze left no escape for these creatures. Many were burned alive while others succumbed to the suffocating smoke. And those familiar with Chattachak's cramped pet zone need not watch any news to imagine such a horror. They say the news is heartbreaking, confirming the long-held concerns of pet lovers and animal advocates. And further down, in fact, all the animals are crammed into tiny cages, far from their natural habitats, enduring questionable hygiene and unbearable heat. And the inferno that gutted the animals at the market underlines one big problem, the complete lack of safety standards. And like the weekend market, this portion of the pet market is open every day. Then down the bottom there, the current market thrives on impulse purchases driven by trends leading to overcrowding, carelessness and ultimately animal suffering. Closing this market is a crucial first step towards ensuring the welfare of animals in Thailand. This, however, should not be the end of the matter. And it's been penned by a Wiener Tupkrajai. As I said, it reads like an editorial and I think it was an open letter published by Thai PBS World. And we've got a glorious sunny day here in Panga, a bit of an onshore wind of around 10 to 15 knots, a nice warm day. 
In fact, a nice day to head out onto Panga Bay in Phuket, and you can do that with Five Star Marine at fivestarmarinephuket.com. Also, if you're up in Panga, you can come and stay on the beach. We've got three beach houses, and you can find them at Beach House Thailand. Links in the description to both those businesses and uh, some special deals as well. Let's move on to our next story now, and this is published in The Nation. World Bank again slashes GDP growth forecast for Thailand to 2.4%. And they say it's marking a further reduction from April when the projection was cut to 2.8%. And the article says the economies of East Asia and the Pacific are expected to grow by 4.8% this year. And this growth helps to offset the slow growth in China with export dependent countries like Thailand and Vietnam benefiting the most from these trends. So let's just quickly check XE.com. And today we've got the US dollar uh, representing 36.6 Thai baht, right up near the top uh, of where it's been over the last year. So concerning for the government in some ways, but it is at least good for some people who are bringing US dollars into Thailand. To this story from timeout.com, and this has just published the last couple of days, Thailand's launched a five-year digital nomad visa. Here's how to apply. Now, we all know the DTV, which is being interpreted by some as a digital nomad visa, was announced before June the 1st, and it was being said to be launched soon after. But the way these stories that are being published at the moment are, are reading, uh, you can apply for it now, but that's not the case. But it's not just the launch date they've got wrong, there's other information as well. This one says the Destination Thailand visa launched on June the 1st and enables remote workers to stay in the country for up to five years. And it follows similar schemes in Malaysia and Indonesia. Well, it wasn't launched on June the 1st and it doesn't allow uh, the holders to stay in the country for up to five years. That wasn't the only story that's been published the last few days from Euronews. Always wanted to live in Thailand? This new digital nomad visa could be your chance. And this was published about three days ago. And it says the country's long-awaited digital nomad visa is launching in the coming weeks, giving people a chance to work there remotely for up to one year at a time. One year at a time? I don't think any of the information coming out about the DTV was suggesting that. But wait, there's more. And this is from Argophilia headline, Thailand introduces five-year digital nomad visa. This was published yesterday. Thailand's the epitome of serenity for both new and seasoned travellers. Due to its tropical climate year-round, this beloved destination is bathed in perpetual sunshine. It melds verdant beaches with the vibrant energy of Bangkok. With all the words you could use to describe beaches, I wouldn't have thought verdant was very appropriate, basically meaning greenery. I mean, okay, we've got palm trees and trees behind the beaches, but the beaches themselves aren't verdant. and We probably wouldn't want them to be so. Anyway, the information says launched on June the 1st, the Destination Thailand visa allows remote workers to reside in the country for up to five years. And then a few more details. You can stay uh, in Thailand for up to five years and you must leave and re-enter every 180 days with an additional fee of $270. So the published information on those three publications, all fairly well known and well read, is wrong. And no wonder people are confused and uh, they'll be rushing to their various embassy websites and uh, getting even more confused when they can't actually apply for those visas at the moment. As to when they're going to be officially announced, and start, we don't know at the moment. And as far as the extension of the uh, visa waiver from 30 to 60 days for some 93 countries, I don't know on a start date on that either. So quick sending, quit sending me messages asking me. Right, to this story, which is going to be very worrying for uh, some of the people who have travelled to Thailand with a large tourist group. This is published in BangkokPost.com. Thai hotels hit by collapse of German firm. 
and the collapse of the third largest tour operator in Europe has started to affect thousands of tourists and hundreds of hotels in Thailand, leading to losses of a, well, obviously an estimated 111 million baht. The Germany-based FTI Group filed for insolvency in the Munich Regional Court earlier this month. The president of the Thai Hotels Association says the cumulative impact is some 111 million baht, Hotels in the South losing 92.9 million, it's basically code for Phuket, uh, lodgings in Bangkok 12.7 million, and the Eastern Region 4 million. Code for that would be mostly Pattaya. He said the losses might be greater as hotels are continuing to submit more information, as FTI was considered one of the biggest feeders for all hotels across Thailand that target European markets. And the recent financial problems with the large tour operators would impact the market both in the short and long term, as hoteliers might be reluctant to provide credits to tour operators or may reduce their credits. Now, we had uh, Thomas Cook going out of business, uh, causing the same sort of problems some three or four years ago. Now, FI, now FTI, why are these big tourist groups having such a problem and going into insolvency? And according to the Vice President of the Suratani Chamber of Commerce, the number of affected tourists in Samui exceeded 1,000, as FTI was one of the largest partners working with operators on the island. So I know quite a few uh, hotel managers and they talk about these tour group organisations, tour group companies, especially this time of the year when they're trying to keep their beds full. And I know that this is going to have quite an effect and we'll follow the story as it progresses. But with that, hopefully you're a bit more up to date with things happening around Thailand. Please subscribe to the channel and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow.